It's a roasting hot day. Uh, my name is Henry Tenby with Jetflix TV. I'm out here. It looks like I'm in a cornfield or in a field. I'm in Alberta. This is Wetaskiwin, and I'm at the famous Reynolds Museum. Having a fabulous time. Lots of fabulous cars here. And the aviation section is of particular interest. This is, of course, the huge building where they've got all the vehicles. And for aviation fans, they have a whole building dedicated to aviation. They've got aircraft outside as well, including a clunk, a Lynx Squadron, Voodoo, T-33, F-5. And I've come across an airplane here that I have an association with. Look at this. This is the beautiful, absolutely beautiful former Hawk Air Aviation Bristol Freighter. Absolutely lovely airplane. It's been here for a number of years and I'm going to tell you all about it. So back in the mid to late 1990s, I was a uh, hardcore aviation fan that was taking color slides of aircraft. Actually, I started taking aircraft slides in 1981. And as a diehard fan of classic prop liners, this airline, Hawk Air, was based out of, uh, where were they based? They were based out of Terrace. So that's what, about uh, several hundred miles north of Vancouver in British Columbia. And Hawk Air used classic airliners, primarily these Bristols, which they had purchased from New Zealand, I believe in the mid 80s. And they were use, using them on mine resupply flights uh, uh, between Wrangell, Johnny Mountain, and uh, there was another place as well that uh, they flew these airplanes to and from to bring out uh, mining concentrate for the, the gold mine up there. And I think it was Johnny Mountain, if I'm not mistaken. Anyhow, uh, I knew the guys that owned this company, uh, Dave Menzies and uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Hawkins. And hence, that's where they got the name of the company, Hawk Air. And they had purchased these airplanes, these Bristols, from New Zealand. And they were operating uh, in in British Columbia. But they didn't have their their company name on the side of the airplane. So as you can see here, it says Hawk Air Aviation on the side of the aircraft. Uh, the registration is GYQS. And I'm going to explain how uh, Henry Tenby has a personal association with this airplane. And if it weren't for my efforts, you wouldn't be seeing the airplane here in the year 2024 with Hawk Air Aviation on the back of the airplane. I was directly responsible for that, as I'm about to explain to you. Well, as a collector of aircraft slides, we always want to have a name on an aircraft when we take a color slide. Uh, airplanes without names on them, uh, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't something that was of value to aircraft slide collectors. So when these airplanes were flying around without any names on them, it just, it would have been a lot better with the names. So I believe it was in 1998 when I had started my job working for a small Vancouver cargo company called Westex, owned by Dave Oliver. Um, I met these guys. I had met the fellows that were all partners in Hawk Air. And I had, I did a trip up to Terrace and uh, I never did get to fly on these airplanes because I was too busy, although the invitation was always there. They had extended uh, the invitation to me many, many times to come up and visit, spend a few days and, and fly with them. But I never got around to it. And that was like 96, 97, 98. But on one of my trips up to Terrace, uh, I can't remember exactly who I was speaking to, whether it was Rod or uh, Mr. Hawkins, uh, or Dave Menzies, I said, look, you guys really need to have your name on the side of the airplane. And at the time, they had just acquired a uh, ATL 98 Carver. And I said, look, is there any way we can get the name Hawk Air on the side of the aircraft? And they said, well, can you help me, Henry? Well, I had been working, I was working for Westex at the time, and I had that same obsession of getting the name Westex on the side of the aircraft. And I had found a, a professional decal manufacturing company in Vancouver that did high quality graphics in, in decal format for vehicles. And uh, I had ordered already uh, decals for Westex because I put the 1-800 phone number and the Westex titles on the Westex F-27s. So I said, absolutely, I'd be happy to help. So I was the guy. It was me who petitioned Hawk Air 
to have their names on their airplanes. And I was the guy who actually ordered uh, the graphics from the Decal Supply Company or the graphic uh, supply company in Vancouver. And then we figured out the dimensions that we needed. I ordered them. I paid for them. I shipped them up to Terrace on our flight because Westex was operating a, a metro liner between Vancouver and Terrace at the time on a contract for one of the courier companies. It might have been Loomis. It was possibly Loomis. But I sent the decals up uh, on our own flight up to Hawk Air and they put the decals on certainly this aircraft. And I know the uh, Carver also had Hawk Air titles as well. So there you go. That's a uh, fun fact of aviation history. And that is how I, Henry Tenby, was responsible for this airplane having the name Hawk Air on it. So that's an interesting factoid of information. I'm very happy that I'm finally getting to see this airplane again, albeit, how many years ago was it? 1998 to the year 2024. So it was 26 years ago uh, that I organized for these titles, Hawk Air, to be applied to the side of the aircraft. So there you have it. So I'll just give you guys a little bit of, of a close-up tour of this Bristol. If you Google, you'll find out when they uh, flew the aircraft in here. I believe they flew it right into the field. There's, as you can see, there's a runway. There's a small general aviation airport uh, right here uh, in Wetaskiwin. And uh, they have some other aircraft outside as well, as you can see right there. But I believe the Bristol landed on this runway. I don't know, it must have been 15 years ago, perhaps. So maybe around the year 2010, something like that. Might have been before that. But it landed here, and it's been sitting here ever since, and it is preserved. At least it wasn't broken up, and uh, it's here for people to enjoy and see this amazing British-built aircraft in all its glorious splendor right here at the Reynolds Museum in Wetaskiwin. So I'll just give you a little bit of a walk, a little bit closer. Beautiful farmer's field kind of um, the vibe we've got going on here. See the clamshell doors here. This airplane was specific. Oh, it's obviously built as a cargo aircraft. It was designed as a row row airplane, meaning roll on, roll off. The clamshell doors would open, a ramp would come down, and vehicles could be rolled on and rolled off up through the ramp and into the uh, cavern of the of the aircraft. So that was the the specific design objective of the aircraft. And the Bristol Super Freighter enjoyed great uh, success. Uh, flying fairly wealthy British tourists and their vehicles across the English Channel uh, to places such as Beauvais and and other French airports just on the other side of the English English Channel. And in the late 1940s and 1950s, you could, uh, if you had enough money, you could fly your car across the Channel instead of putting it on a ferry. And uh, you you could also accompany your car on the flights and be across the channel quite quickly. Here's just another view of the Bristol. It's been sitting here quiet for the last 15 years at the Reynolds Museum. And we have other aircraft here at the Reynolds Museum as well. 104 Starfighter, a Sabre, and a uh, helicopter, XRCAF helicopter. And here's also some, some, looks like an Airspray A26, former water bomber and needs to be put to back together and restored. I guess the folks from the Reynolds Museum will eventually get to that project, but there it is. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Just giving you a little bit of a walk around this beautiful British creation from yesteryear. Not too many Bristol freighters la left fully intact on the planet. I guess there are some in the UK and in New Zealand, perhaps in Australia, they have one or two, I don't know, but I just know that there's not many that are still, still uh, seeing the light of day here on planet Earth in the year 2024. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, perhaps thumbs up would be appreciated. And I do look forward to your comments as well. I love reading your comments. Thank you for watching. And if you're not already a subscriber to the Jetflix channel here on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Thanks again. 
I am looking forward to seeing you on my next video. My name is Henry Tenby, and I'd like to introduce my brand new book for classic airline fans. It's called Air Travel Time Machine, and it features over 600 fabulous color Kodachrome memories taken between 1942 and 1960. So this book is a culmination of 30 years of collecting vintage, old, aircraft slides uh, from the 1950s and 60s. And this has been my life passion for decades. And the type of pictures that I am very interested in are not the standard images of just sterile shots of airplanes. These are pictures that tell a story, that show people, that show the interiors of airplanes, and show what travel was like during the golden age of aviation. This book is 288 pages. It's a hardcover book printed on a 106 pound GSM, high quality gloss paper. It is a beautiful presentation and you are going to love the images and it is filled with captions and memories and great images that'll take you back to the post-war era of air travel. I hope you enjoy purchasing my book and reading my book. What follows are a selection of sample images from inside the book, just to give you an idea of the atmosphere and memories that are included in this incredible book. So I really hope that you enjoy the contents. It is a unique book because it really is a time travel wormhole view back through the sands of time to what air travel was like during the golden age of aviation and airlines. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you'll consider purchasing my book. As a side note, this is a limited production book. We're only printing 300 copies for the UK and Europe and another 300 copies for Canada USA distribution. So if you'd like to order a book, be sure to do so as soon as possible so that you are guaranteed to get a copy in your library.